Hey you guys, welcome back. I'm Courtney Anderson and this is Everyday Anderson. Today I'm gonna be making a little meat and gravy. I don't know, I'm calling it what you might call it because I don't know what you call it, beef patties and gravy. Um, where you cook beef patties and just have them simmering in some gravy. You can do brown gravy. I like to make my gravy a little bit red. Um, and so my family really enjoys the ground beef type of meals like meatloaf and my husband really loves it and so it's quick and easy right now i don't have a lot of time it is four o'clock on the dot and so i usually start cooking at four o'clock and that's what i'm doing today i'm going to bring you guys along with me and just let you know how simple and easy it is to get a meal prepared for your family in no time you guys so i got a couple of things out so let me wash my hands and show you what i got going on and then we'll get started So I just went and grabbed a few things. I didn't want to pull everything out because I always forget something anyway. So let me just kind of bring you down here and a little bit closer. And I have cabbage. We are going to be having it with cabbage tonight. Um, I don't do like breads and carbs every day, rice and potatoes, but you can certainly do that. It is delicious that way. I got my onion, celery, and bell pepper. Can y'all see that? And some beef broth. So. I have some store-bought beef broth and I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. I think I'm gonna tackle the cabbage first because I'll let that kind of cook while I'm working on the rest of the ground beef and everything. And I have my ground beef that's been out this morning. So if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I do my haul at the farmer's market once a month and I freeze the meat. And this is what it looks like when I freeze it. I just put what it is and this says ground sirloin. I'm gonna do a ground sirloin today um, because it's a little bit tighter of a meat. And so it'll give me like a more firmer patty with our meat patties and the gravy. And I just put mine in a little bit of water a few hours before it's time. I think I set this out this morning, maybe at 10 or 11. Um, to start getting that ready to thaw out. Okay, so let me grab my cutting board. And then I'm gonna bring you guys in just a little bit closer. You can probably hear my kids in the background. They were running errands with me today and I know they are tired, so I gave them a little break. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna use this one for the cabbage. So let's use this big pot for the cabbage. And I love my heavy bottom cookware, you guys. So with the cabbage, I never know where to really get started. So I'm just gonna go in and tackle this bad boy down the middle and then I'm gonna cut out some of that core after I get this cut up and so I don't really like the hard pieces some people do keep it in there and I just go in and cut it like a triangle and get it out of there and put it in the garbage disposal sometimes I put carrots in here I might go in maybe maybe not let me just get this started since I'm short on time. Throw that right on in there, you guys. So I hope you guys are having a good day. I am doing something different. I normally have these on my YouTube channel, which I am going to post this on my YouTube channel. But I also wanted to bring this to you guys on Facebook because I know sometimes I can reach a different audience that way. So... And so the cabbage comes together as simple as that. I am gonna put in some onion in there, some big chunks. I'm gonna do big chunks of onion because my husband and I, oh, this is bad. My husband and I are actually the only ones who eat the big chunks of onion so we can leave them pretty big. When the kids were, um, Younger, we would make them smaller and hide it from them, but now they kind of know the deal. They'll eat the smaller pieces, but they won't eat the really big chunks. So I'm gonna get rid of this, hold on. So let me just bring out this new bag that I got from the farmer's market, you guys. Cut this open. 
Let me get one of these out of here. I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than one. All right, so that happens when you're buying fresh ingredients and actually I don't mind that. Um, I would prefer to have fresh ingredients and to just lose an onion or two than to be stuck buying processed foods a lot. I know some people say that food goes bad. Well, when you're buying fresh food, it will go bad. That's just part of it. This morning, I actually, I'm looking for my towel. This morning, I actually made the kids um, some pancakes because I had buttermilk that was gonna be going bad. And so, um, they like buttermilk pancakes. They like my buttermilk biscuits, you guys, I did. Um, buttermilk biscuits for Christmas. So if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you check it out. Um, but I couldn't indulge in any because I try to cut back on carbs during the week and I do indulge on the weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but they were excited. So, I mean, things will go bad sometimes. That's just what happens. So, and so this will kind of cook down as you're going through the motions with your fire and the oil. Let me crank this up. Turn it up on Holly, move y'all a little bit closer. And I'm gonna get my olive oil. I miss my old olive oil. This is not the olive oil that I usually cook with. I tried something different, but I'll tell you guys about that one day, okay? <laughs> so let's get this started and I'm gonna get some salt. I do want to put some garlic in there as well. So, let me find my garlic press and move a little bit this way so you guys can see. Okay, so I got my fresh bag of garlic. I hope this hasn't um, gone bad because I do buy this regularly. It smells good. So, sometimes I get the ones in the jar But this has been fine lately. Let me try to hurry up and do this while that's going. And so with my garlic press, I mentioned this in a couple of videos, you guys, but I love this because all I have to do is to really just lay this out and press it like that. Press it. Press it. And I'm gonna wait just a second before I throw it in there. And get this chocolate out. I like to fry my garlic first before I um, come back and let it simmer. You don't have to do that. You can just start it off, you know, with your liquids in there, but I'm gonna fry it down first, get a little brownness to it, and then come back with my liquid. So you can use a chicken. So I usually use a chicken broth. Um, I had an alarm going off, so I had to cut y'all off. This is my Better Than Bouillon, which I love this. Um, but I have this in beef and chicken. But if you just have a chicken, broth like this i have that too and i have fresh chicken broth let me sneeze if you have fresh chicken broth that's fine and so i'll be showing you guys pretty soon how i do my fresh chicken broth i did get some chicken carcasses or chicken bags from the farmer's market so i'm excited about that i just didn't have enough room in the freezer to put it in See, that breaks up pretty nicely. Let me find my cup. So with the pre-made bouillon, you're just gonna put like a tablespoon of this or however much you want and mix it up. You don't have to blend it. That's just something extra that I do to blend. So I just got a little bit of water in here. And the color on here is so pretty, I love it. And let's just do a little mix. And really, that is good, but since I got it out, let's just go on in. All the way, y'all. That 
that's it, just real quick. All right, so this is going. You can put a little sugar in it if you want to. Some people like to balance off that salty and sweet. You can, I don't, and I'm still gonna come back later. Um, maybe with some more of this kind of bouillon cube or some garlic powder onion powder i'll kind of figure that out in a second and so i'll show you guys i have just a couple of little brown pieces starting to form down there so can you see me all right so once i get that going i'm ready to go in with my garlic and my liquid hold on Don't let your garlic burn. Just give it a little second or two to touch that heat. And once it touches that heat, I'm going in with my liquid. And after this, I can cut it down. I'm going to actually put this on the other flame. Cause I want to save this one. Take it over there. We'll check on it in a second. And so now I'm going to get my meat ready you guys. Cause the meat has to start cooking before I do the gravy. So I'm going to show you that. All right, so I poured the water off of my ground sirloin, and I'm just gonna, I'm not adding vegetables in here today. A lot of times I will add vegetables in, but since I got the vegetables and the gravy, I'm just gonna go in with some dried seasonings today, okay? And so we need flour and eggs for that. Okay, so if you guys saw uh, my meatloaf video, it's pretty much the same thing, okay? So we're gonna do some egg and flour. I had ground chuck. I used ground chuck for the meatloaf before, which we kind of love that like fattiness to the meat, just to be honest about it. But the sirloin will hold the texture a little bit better if you're doing something like the patty that you need to hold up in the gravy. So that's why I'm doing that. And I don't even know how much this is, you guys. I'm gonna go in, more like maybe a tablespoon or so. Yeah, that'll be enough. Okay, let me close up my bouillon and get this out of the way. And it's kind of weird because I put chicken bouillon in that and I'm actually gonna be cooking with beef today, but don't worry about it. Some people actually use beef and chicken bouillon in the same meal and it's whatever you wanna do, really. So. If you guys watch my videos, my seasonings are pretty much the same. I am, I do already have a video um, showing you some of my favorite seasonings and the things I like to keep in the kitchen. And it's usually the same thing. So let me back you guys up. Go in here, got my onion powder, garlic powder. I'm gonna do a little bit of Tony's some celery seed that I got from the farmer's market. You guys know I love this. Um, and chili powder, smoked paprika. I think that'll take care of it. All right, so let's move that out of the way. Just a little bit of Tony's, can you guys see? Just a little bit of Tony's, not too much, because I already put salt in there. I'm gonna go in with some smoked paprika, which I love. I could do a little bit more of that. 
okay? Chili powder, which I got from the farmer's market. You guys, if you're in the Atlanta area, definitely stop by the Year to Cap Farmer's Market. This chili powder was $1.15, okay? So if you go to mainstream stores, this stuff is super expensive. This is ground celery seed was 81 cents. And look at all this. I never finish it. Celery is the underrated flavor. You heard me say that before. I'm going to put in some garlic powder. I got me a new container of the fine ground. My California garlic is really supposed to be a, <clears throat> a topping. But I ran out and so I've been using it to actually cook with. But I usually just sprinkle it on my fried chicken and stuff like that. But, woo, these seasonings about to take me out. All right, onion powder. Let me get my pan ready. And I think my kids put my smaller pan in here, so. Get rid of that. Those seasonings got my nose cutting up. Let's go in with that. Ooh. There's some olive oil. I'm not even gonna start it, you guys. I'm gonna just mix this up, put it in there, and then start the pan, because this doesn't have to be cooked, done all the way. It's just to get it started for our gravy. So let's go in. In my meatloaf, I do put like a cream. You can do that here if you want a really tender patty, but you also increase the chances of it falling apart on you. So it's up to you. And again, you can put your onion, celery, and bell pepper in here if you want to, or just onions, garlic, whatever you want. It would be delicious. So let's just make some small patties. And I leave them kind of fat because you don't want them to fall apart on you in here. Rub them in that oil. Make sure you guys come to my YouTube channel and Leave me a comment and let me know how you like to fix your patties and gravy. If you like patties and gravy, do you like it with more of a brown gravy or a red gravy? I actually grew up with brown gravy, so my mom actually makes more of a brown gravy. But whenever I look at a brown gravy, I just have to add tomatoes to it. <laughs> I don't know why. And I really do want to do a potato or something like that. But I feel like, one, I'm doing too much. And two, I need to be cutting back on that stuff. So... I'm trying not to do it, but I just love like a stew, especially maybe because it's winter outside. I love a stew. I love, you know, stuff like that, like soups, potatoes, carrots. I don't know why. I guess I just realized that maybe it's because it's winter time, right? Get this all mashed up together. And we're going to cut this fire on and then we'll get our vegetables ready. So let's do the vegetables last because they're actually going in kind of last. So let's get this out the way and wash my hand. All right, let me check on my cabbage. Let that water drain off in there. Swung to the side, and cabbage does not take long, so I'm actually going to cut that down. And so I have an onion here. I kind of want a little bit more onion, so let me get another onion. Oh, I brought them out. I grabbed that white onion because it was pretty big, um, but that one's gone bad on me. So let me see what we got with this one. And I just cut the ends off my onions like this and I know I'm kind of wasting some onion you guys but hey whatever this is what I like to do it's quick and easy for me 
and it helps me just peel that onion fast and easy. I ain't got time to be sitting up here all day with an onion. I'm not gonna use this whole thing. I'm gonna use like half of it. And like I said, I'm gonna keep it in chunks for me and my husband. So let me do that. I'm gonna save this in some aluminum foil. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator because we always need onions around here. Oh, let's cut this on. And so I'm turning that like on a medium high. Really, it's kind of high, a little bit less than high. So we'll get that started. I always kind of start on high. My mom used to always tell me to cut the fire down, and I still don't listen. Okay, so my garlic, I love this little press look. You just roll on it. And on this board, I'll slide it around and get it all out of there. And that's it. So celery, I bought some new celery this weekend, but I want to use up what I have. And again, it's not that important for me to get it small because my husband didn't even really eat this. It's just me. And so I can actually take my vegetables in bigger chunks. So I'm not like the kids. I'm gonna put another stalk. I'm not like the kids, you guys. You know, they always complain about vegetables and they don't want vegetables. Oh, lost a piece. Make sure y'all leave me a comment and let me know who you're cooking for. Are you cooking for yourself? Are you cooking for a special somebody or your kids, whoever it may be, you guys? I really believe in the beauty and the importance of giving to your family and the ones you love something that you made, something that you did from the heart. So whether it's arts and crafts, food, time, um, this is something that I can do. I don't do a lot of like playful things i don't play around like my husband is the playful one so he plays the video games he plays with the dollhouse with them and so this is what i do to contribute to my family okay so let me get a bell pepper and rinse this off so that's going i'm going to cut it down just a little bit and so my bell pepper let me just cut the top off and dig the seeds out Okay, and so with the bell pepper, I leave this pretty whole too because I love to kind of bite down into a nice size bell pepper. So I'm just going to cut up some big chunks. It's going to be a nice chunky little meal with these. This is really good with rice and potatoes, you guys. Every time I make these like hearty meals like this, I feel so tempted, but I'm going to fight the urge today. Okay, if you can't, then that's fine because I understand some days I can't even. Okay. That is that. And so I'm going to wait for these to get brown and I'm going to check on the cabbage, you guys. I'm going to flip them over. I'm not going to let them go too long because I want this to be done when my husband gets home. And it's time for me to start winding down because the sun goes down really quickly right about now. Okay. So I might come back to the onion and garlic. Let me get a plate for this. Wait. So hopefully these little puppies are holding together. I'm gonna go in with some more oil. Because like I said, that sirloin, that sirloin doesn't give me enough of fat really like I like. So I have to go in with some extra oil bring y'all in closer and also the other thing is the reason why i don't want to get this too brown is i want to use this for my gravy if i make this too brown and the patties are kind of dark on each side that's fine it'll still be good but i don't want to use that oil for my gravy i've done that too many times and made that mistake i don't want to do it today so let me see if i can toss the oil around in here and get these flipped over There we go. 
that one don't want to come up just yet. I'm going to make it come up. Ouch. I'm going to make it come up. And you can kind of move these around when you first put them in and keep them from being in the same position. They won't stick as much. I'm coming back to my cabinet, you guys. I'm going to pull it back so you can kind of see a little bit. Okay, so the cabinet is wilting down. I'll leave that. I don't know. Yeah, I just keep these moving around. I got the flour fried gravy and I got the beef broth. Let me go ahead and open up this beef broth, you guys. Because once I put the gravy and get the gravy started, that's only going to be like another five or ten minutes really before these are done. And so I got my diced tomatoes. I'm going to try to actually set aside what I need because if I don't I'll actually use this whole can which I don't want to do Out of the juice, I just like the tomatoes. Make this a nice little red gravy. I want somebody to tell me how they make their red gravy. We all cook differently, you guys, and we all learn from each other and you know, find motivation with one another. And so one thing I did not put in here that I usually do, I forgot to, is my Worcestershire sauce, the Worcestershire sauce, the official way to say it. And um, I'll put that in the gravy because I do like that flavor. So this one is going to be my problem, child. You always got to have one problem, child. The longer it cooks down, it will kind of seize up, and so those are the patties. Okay, I got a message coming through. So here are the patties. I didn't let them get too dark. Let me pull out my sauce and hopefully I won't forget it later, y'all. All right, what's going on with these vegetables? I'm saving my garlic to last. I meant to break my, break my little onion up. He'll come apart while he's cooking. So now I got all my stuff out the way. I can bring y'all a little bit closer. Come apart, little onion. My husband is always telling me he likes to taste his onions. He says that I um I make them too small. He's like, you know, I like to taste my onion. He likes onions and garlic and big chunks. Come out of there. There we go. And just let this stir around, you guys. Don't get too dark on me. And I 
I'm probably gonna need a little bit more oil. Like I said, with that um, sirloin, you are gonna need a little bit more oil than you would with like a ground chuck. That's the reason why I don't do a whole lot of sirloin anymore. I used to, but I don't. I just like the flavor and the fat because you're still gonna wind up adding the fat and oil back, so. get these cooking down a little bit more and then we're gonna come in with some flour i'm probably gonna do about a fourth of a cup of flour oops i lost the whole onion y'all i need that all right this is looking good and so I'm gonna go in with that flour. I'm gonna do my garlic too. I'm scared to burn my garlic. And at this point, we're making a roux or a gravy, whatever you will call it. So, oops, my flour making a mess. So this is a fourth of a cup, you guys. I went in and just shy of that. I'm not gonna use all of it, okay? And so now I'm gonna crank this up. So now it's the time to turn that fire up really, really high so that I can make a gravy. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe everybody doesn't like to cook on high, but I do. I cook a lot of things on high. I start on high like I did with the cabbage and I turn it down. I do that with my eggs too, and I feel like my eggs are so good. Let me get this flour out of here. And see, if I would've had a ground chuck, this would've been a lot more oil. And I'm not gonna keep fooling with this oil. I'm just gonna let this flour cook down with the oil that's already in there. And it'll still be all good. Let's crank it up a little bit more. So you just have to get that raw edge, as they call it, off the flour. Let that cook down however you wanna do it. I've played around with flour for so long, you guys. I was making biscuits when I was younger, like 14, 15. Um, gravies and stuff like that just playing around and i made so many mistakes just trying to figure it out i remember when i used to fix gravy and it would be too thin i would go to another pan and add a flour mixture cook that down so it'll not be raw and come back and add it <laughs> to the current dish so i didn't get a whole lot with flours and breads and dough so a little too much because now i gotta cut back i'm gonna cut this down a little bit And the tomatoes will help to deglaze the pan. You can see it's already starting to do that and get some of the flavor, some of that flavor off the bottom and keep it from just being stuck on flour. It just kind of reminds me of an etouffee the way it's starting out. I'm gonna turn it all the way up and I'm going in with my beef roll. And I don't have exact measurements, I just eyeball it, but I'm really loving how big these vegetable chunks are. I think my husband is gonna really enjoy this today. I know I am. And let me not forget the Worcestershire sauce, you guys. I have to smell it. I like to smell my seasonings. Um, people always ask me why I do that, and that helps me to kind of gauge. I can just smell how salty or um, tangy something is and how much I wanna use. So that looks good. And I can always come back later with some more liquid so it's easier to get it too thick and thin it out later on than it is to have to come back and it's too thin. Like I said, I spent many years doing that when I was younger and playing around and I still do from time to time make a lot of mistakes like that. But with something like this, the dinners that I've been fixing for a long time, I'm pretty cool on these. So let me cover this. 
let that heat crank up you guys and so i want to thank you guys for being here i got a few more minutes i'm gonna show you guys how i put the meat back in there right now it is 4 35 okay and i spent a lot of time fiddling around so i usually shoot for like um i'm gonna cut that off the cabbage is done I usually spend a lot of time fiddling around, but um, 30 minutes is my time frame. Okay. So this is looking good. It's starting to thicken it up a little bit. I got a little boil going on. That looks really good, you guys. Let me see if I can bring y'all in a little bit closer. Is it steam getting in the way? Look at that. And at this point, I'm gonna put my meat in and then I'm gonna flavor it. I don't wanna flavor it before I put the meat in because the meat has some salt and everything with it and I don't wanna make it too salty or too something. Okay. So this was my problem child. I'm dropping that one right on in. And as that sirloin, cooks all the way it will start to kind of seize up a little bit and tighten up so i'm not worried about that i hate another little problem child that tried to fall apart on me put that in you guys and so i'm gonna dig this down up in here See that? And let them start nesting towards the bottom of the pan. And if you do, this one's falling apart. If you do happen to get too much liquid in here, just remember to leave the top off. Right now, I feel like it's good. I'm gonna let it come down to a very low simmer and cover it. But if I wanna get more liquid off of it, I'll leave the top off. Eventually, all liquid will evaporate. It's just a matter of how much time you have. Do you have five minutes? Do you have five hours? Hopefully, you didn't put that much liquid, that much extra liquid in your dish. It will eventually evaporate out and leave a nice concentrated flavor. But the point is for it to not have to do that as much, okay? So we really only want a couple minutes of that not to have so much liquid that we're stuck here trying to get it to evaporate off at that point I would probably start a new gravy but anyways so the gravy looks nice to me let me see if I can get a spoon let me find a spoon for you guys and so you can kind of see what we're working with a little thickness not too much and it's not too thin so I'm gonna taste it in a little bit but anywho that's it, you guys, and I'm going to come back and show you the finished product. I'm glad you were here with me today. Stay tuned. Check out my YouTube channel or just follow my Facebook page, and I'll be back with some more easy, simple family dishes, okay? Mwah. Okay, you guys, here it is. I did fix some rice for the kids, and my husband just came home, so it's ready just in time. Look at those vegetables, that meat and garlic. It looks so good. I'm just having mine with the cabbage and I think my husband will too. And I fixed some rice for the kids and so they get a smaller plate and I do like to kind of make it look a little bit pretty for everybody. So I'm gonna go ahead with a little bit of parsley, you guys, but it looks so good. We're gonna definitely enjoy this and I'm gonna enjoy my vegetables, those big chunks of onions and pepper, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you soon.